Who invites you into their house? Cooks you a marshmallow? I mean, this is the American dream. Well, you know what? In America, you're free to do things as well or as poor or as poorly as you'd like. Some people make poor decisions, other people make better decisions. And so we've made a decision to live in a home where our kids feel secure, where we can hear the crickets, where we see a full moon, where we have a church that loves us, and where we can make marshmallows for our guests. Oh, thank you, Pastor Ted. <laughs> Pastor Ted, you're a very intelligent man. Oh, well, thank you. Okay. <laughs> they fear you. Yes. They don't want you in the government. I'll be talking to the White House in another three and a half hours. They reach out to you. Yes. And now, please welcome Ted Hager. Raindrops keep falling on my head. It's just, it's, it's raindrops a blessing for me. I'm living a pretty good life. And so, I love this. It was awesome. Stadiums full of men that want to live a better life and be better with their wives and all that kind of thing. Praise the Lord and pass the testosterone. <laughs> That's exactly what this is. There's loads of testosterone in the room and uh, everybody seems to love it. Would you ever lie to your pastor? I would never lie to pastor. <laughs> and I wouldn't lie to you either. <laughs> then the president said, Ted Haggard, you need to come to the Crawford Ranch and I'll show you what a ride is like. <laughs> oh, hey, honey. Yeah, I'll be home as soon as I can get the scooter started. Okay. All right. Okay, love you too. Bye. You said love you too, but I don't think I know, she said love you. But she thought it. <laughs> I could tell by the way she looked at me as I was walking out the door this morning. Before you went on, you gave me your wallet. Oh, thank you. Why did you trust me with that? How come I'm from New York? Why did you think you could trust me with your wallet? I thought if you if you needed money and took it out of there, it would just be because you needed it. You really are crazy. Yeah. Well, it's great to see you again. Uh, <laughs> come back. Come for come for Christmas time or or something. Yeah. Yeah. Pastor Ted can ride his scooter into church. Oh yeah. nation's most prominent evangelical pastors is making stunning new admissions about his private life. Reverend Ted Haggard said in an interview today that he bought crystal meth from Mike Jones, the male prostitute who says Haggard paid him for sex. I called him to buy some meth, but I threw it away. And did you ever have sex with him? I went there for a massage. I know how to bring pleasure to a man if you, you know, want some company by a good looking Hot man, give me a call. Our focus was on Ted. He admitted that he'd been involved having massages, that he'd been involved with a man who had been, uh, was a, a gay man. Was in our mind as pastors, plenty of evidence to say that's not the kind of leader that people want. Now in the news, an admission of guilt, a plea for forgiveness. Former evangelical leader Ted Haggard has confessed that he's had a lifelong sexual problem. That confession from a statement read during morning services at the church Haggard founded. 
I know your hearts are broken today, but we're here to bring uh, comfort, encouragement, and strength to you. Amen. Now I'd like to read you a letter from Pastor Ted, my dear New Life Church family. I am so sorry. I'm sorry for the disappointment, the betrayal, and the hurt. The fact is, I am guilty of sexual immorality. And I take responsibility for the entire problem. I am a deceiver and a liar. There is a part of my life that is so repulsive and dark that I've been warring against it all of my adult life. As a result, I did things that were contrary to everything I believe. Please forgive me. I am a sinner. I have fallen. I desperately need to be forgiven and healed. Sign, Ted Haggard. Trouble so hard, oh Lord, my trouble so hard. Don't nobody know my trouble for God. Don't nobody know my trouble for God. have here is someone who in leadership has failed the standard that he lifted up for himself. He had a relationship with me. We had gay sex. As a person that has a high level of authority and a, a higher position, he has to fall harder. Uh, instructed him he can't do any public interviews, he can't have any public media, he just needs to disappear. It seems folks here wish Tag Haggard well, and more importantly, they just wish him gone. Pastor Ted, last time I saw you, you were the king of a huge mega church. Where did all your friends go? They're, they left. I violated the rules. So, shouldn't have done that. So, uh, we're, we're calling this stage in our life our exile. We've been exiled permanently from the state of Colorado and instructed to take me and my wife and our children outside of the state of Colorado permanently to put down roots someplace else. And how does it feel to be an exile? We're miserable. We shouldn't be deceitful. We shouldn't intentionally mislead people. We shouldn't appear to be one thing and actually be another. And if there's something that you're thinking of doing that you would want to keep secret, simply don't do it. If you need to go somewhere in the middle of the night and you want to keep it a secret and hope nobody ever knows, don't go there. If you'll notice, on the front page of the newspaper, every single day, there's somebody's secret. I was a happy woman. I was not aware of the depth of, of struggle that was going on internally in him. I think I, think I knew from time to time that, that there wasn't the level of intimacy that I desired that has been changed through this process, but, but I never knew the depth of his struggle or um, some of the things that, that he was having to, to deal with privately. I, I didn't know those things. Why did you stay with him? I stuck with him because I, I love him. I believe he's worth it because he's a human being. And I just don't believe in writing people off because they have mistakes. I believe you fight for the good. And I knew in order to restore honor to him and to our children, that, or actually, to restore honor to our children, the best thing I could do is help restore honor to their father. Love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, 
Bless those who curse you and pray for those who mistreat you. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. So is this what you guys do on a Saturday night? We read to each other the parts we really like. And so, but see a little paragraph like that? That... That'll get you through the night. That'll get you through the night. Oh, yeah. And the day. That's a good line. It will get you through the night. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Hello. We're in Scottsdale, Arizona. People have made their house available to us to stay in at no expense. Come on in. Great. Okay. Come on in. So you're going from safe house to safe house. Yeah, they, they're loners and they're nice. This is gorgeous. <laughs> hey, welcome to my crib. <laughs> All right, well, here's my bed made of memory foam. Who gets this room? I call it. Yeah. You know, the flowers are for him. <laughs> Little feathers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have a TV, as you can see. And very nice cabinets to put all of my stuff. How much stuff did you bring with you from Colorado? Just clothes. Do you like this more or less than the last house? This is like a chill house. Our house in Colorado Springs is like a home. Yeah. We're going to be able to stay in this home for four months, and then we don't know where we'll go. Today we're driving to the University of Phoenix. I'm going to interview for a job there to walk people through the online program for the University of Phoenix. And this is incredible because I'm 51 years old and I've never interviewed for a job in my life. I feel like a 19 year old or a 16 year old. And so it's kind of exciting because I put my tie on thinking, oh, I'm going to a job interview. Okay, so let's get ready for the interview. Yeah. Why should I hire you and not somebody else? Oh, there's nobody else that's had my experience in motivating people and encouraging people to do what will improve their life, like me. Okay, so what are you worried they're going to ask you? The, the touchy thing is going to be, why did you get fired from your last job? Or why did you quit, resign from your last job? What are you going to say? I'm going to say that I had a sexual relationship with someone other than my wife. And that was a conflict, of course, with church, and you can't. You don't think they know that already? No, this guy won't know it. My next application, if this doesn't work out, is to drive a city bus, because they only require a high school education, which in the secular world, that's all I have, because my bachelor's degree is in English Bible, which is worthless in the secular world. Okay, good luck on the big interview. Okay, thanks, bye. How'd it go? Oh, it went well. I'm feeling a little bit like George Costanza right now. Um, <laughs> you, Cause you know how George Costanza always felt like his interviews went well and he always made such a fool of himself. I have no way to measure this. I have no measurement system. I don't, I've never done this before. So you think you're gonna get the job? Yeah, if they don't Google me, I'll get the job. If you'd Googled me, you would think I was Adolf Hitler or Idi Amin. Or worse, gay. <laughs> That's worse in some circles. In some circles, they'd rather have me be a murderer than be gay. So, so yeah.